and welcome to another tantalizing episode of Excel TV. How you doing, Oz? I'm doing wonderful here in Portland, Oregon. Feeling sexy, bringing heat to data, and whooping crap data's ass. Jordan, what about you? Oh, wow. I, uh... <laughs> I'm I'm doing great in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, no follow up on that. John, how are you? Hola, soy John Micalutis, the Mike's on line. Vengo desde España. Are we not talking Spanish or in English? <laughs> uh, hi guys, John Micalutis here from Mike's on line dot com, coming live from Spain in Vitoria, which is near Bilbao. So hello and welcome and. Thank you for having me on your fabulous show. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, everyone, this is Rick, Rick Grantham.com, also of Excel.tv. Uh, with John, you might say, wow, he's in Spain at Michaludis. What? That's not Spanish. Well, you know, it's, it's, I didn't know whether to go with the Foster's is Australian for beer tonight or whether to have a siesta. So I said we're going to go with the Medellin from Mexico. Uh, oh, how relevant. Very... Uh, well, guys, first up on our Excel challenge, over to you, Jordan. Last week, I asked, I said, hey, look, we have this um, Incel Sparkline trick. So you've seen this before. It's, these, um, it's when you use the repeat function. You put the pipe symbol in, and then you give it an, a certain amount of times to repeat. You can see at this top arrow, that's just with the pipe symbol. So my question to you was, what um, is the font that you see in A3? So there are several fonts that do this, but what it basically does is it will condense those pipe symbols down, and that what's, that's what gives you that full bar chart look for the incel um, mm -hmm. uh, chart. So there's multiple fonts that one can use. I said just name one. Let's go take a look at a few of these. Now, Playbill, that's the one I use, Stencil. I actually knew about that one. I didn't, I didn't really use it. Now, these last two actually came in from our answers. Britannic Bold, I've never used that for anything. And this other one, Hot and Schweiler, definitely, I didn't even know that that was a font. But apparently, Pencil, Stencil, or Playbill, I should say, Stencil, Britannic Bold, and Hot and Schweiler, those are the ones uh, that will give you that cool effect. So let's take a look at this week's winner. It's... Uh, it's uh, being shown right here. I don't want to pronounce it and mess up your name. Now, I've reached out to you over uh, the Excel TV website. Just make sure to follow up with me uh, to claim your prize. So, episode two of season three. I picked this question to be pertinent with our guest, John Michelotis, known for his pivot table work. So, who is considered the father of pivot tables? Now, here's what's interesting about this question. I didn't even know there was a father of pivot tables. I was just researching what kind of questions one could ask about pivot tables, and apparently there is. Um, and the book that's being referenced is, this is just a hint, by Bill Jelen and Michael Alexander. So uh, if you do some sleuthing online, you'll actually be able to find this answer. I didn't even know that, the, that there was an answer or that there was a question um, that there was a father of pivot tables. So that is our question, who is considered the father of pivot tables? You can answer on Excel.tv or on the Facebook or Twitter. All right. And that... Is my that is oh. the challenge for this week? And whoever gets that one is going to get a copy of my book. Oh yes, yes. Whoever wins will get a copy of Oz's book. Show it to him. That is, and I read that book. I referenced it today at work. It is a great book. And I'm going to throw in a copy of my Extreme Pivot Table online course as well. Awesome! Wow, two for. Yeah. Nice. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. We are on fire tonight. We are. There's a there's a lot of love here at Excel TV. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, season three, everybody. It's a it's a brand new day. Speaking of a brand new day, today, our favorite Australian friend, all the way from Spain, John Michaludis from My Excel Online, joins us. Well, welcome, John. Hey, John, would you would you start off a little bit? Just tell us a little bit about your website. Yeah, well, MyExcelOnline.com has pretty much everything. It has an online course. At the moment, I only have one online course. It's called the Extreme Pivot Table online course. And I call it Extreme because it has over 200 tutorials, um, 10 hours of material. 
207 paint tutorials to be exact, okay? Um, so it's got that, and it took me 12 months to create. And yeah, it's been a success ever since I released it uh, in July 2014. Um, and then I have a, a blog on there, and that I started with a blog in September 2014, and I do weekly blogs. I do four blogs a week, one on oh, wow. formulas, another one on pivot tables, another one on charts, and another one on analysis. And they're quick um, blogs. It's you know a minute each. It's a screenshot, so it's an animated GIF, so it's a screen capture of the Excel um, workbook and, and, and the trick. And also have instructions and photos. So it's it's mainly based for beginners and intermediate users of Excel, because as we know, 95% of Excel users around the world don't know how to use Excel, and that's about 700 million Excel users, maybe 800 million Excel users around the world um, are being quoted. Um, so 95% don't know how to use that. So that's why I've decided just to focus on beginners and intermediate users of Excel. Um, and what else do I have? I have a podcast and I started that in July last year. So um, yeah, I've got a podcast on there where I interview fellow Excel experts and MVPs and get their um, Excel insights. So um, yeah, so I've started that. I've got about seven shows now and that's pretty much it. So next on the agenda is going to be a new online course, probably Power Pivot, because a lot of people um, are asking for that. And that's going to take me another, who knows, 12 months. I'm probably going to get another 10, 10 hour course. And after that, who knows, you know, I'll, I'll bring out podcasts once a month and also blog posts four times a week. So that's MikeSonline.com. So, you know, it started off in 2014. I was working at a GE, General Electric, in 2012. I had an internal blog there, an Excel blog, and I used to do the same thing, post blogs, Excel tips once a week, wow. and I had 10,000 followers of my colleagues within Excel, sorry, within General Electric. Now, General Electric has 300,000 employees, so I had you know, about less than 5%, and I thought about it, I go, these professionals don't know how to use Excel, mm. and I go, mm. man, I need to do something. So that's why I created that course. I go, I want to create this pivot table course, and I want to sell to these guys, and I'm going to get rich. <laughs> I created the course. I couldn't sell it to GE because compliance came in and said, hey, you know, you can't sell the course because you're an employee, blah, blah, blah. I go, okay, I'm not going to sell it to you guys. I sell to the rest of the world. And yeah, so that's why I, I got into um, online teaching because uh, I saw the need for it. There are so many people, man. There are so many professionals that don't know how to use Excel because they're just thrown into it and I thought of, okay, look, I'm going to create this pivot table course because no one had pivot table course before. They had everything else on there. They had, you know, a formula course or Excel in general, maybe macro courses, but no one had a pivot table course. I mean, maybe they had a small pivot table course, but not an extreme pivot table course. And, um, and once I got into that, you know, I, I bought this book here, the pivot table data crunching. That gave me the structure for the um, for the course yeah, I went that's online. An excellent book. It is a great book. It is a great book. Um, and so I went on YouTube. I went on all these different websites, and, and every trick that's out there is on this course. And, and yeah, so online on e-learning is a one hundred billion dollar industry in twenty sixteen. So. You guys should get on there. I know you're writing books, but you should get on on e-learning and and you know. To the listeners out there as well, if you want to um, teach other people how to use Excel, man, it's easy to do. The software is cheap, and all you need is, is a is a microphone and a camera. So yeah. Let me, let me jump in real quick then. Now we got a we got a tons of questions to ask you about <laughs> covering there. Um, whenever you so first off, congratulations, man! You had ten thousand followers, and I'm assuming you didn't have ten thousand employees. You can tell. Well, no, no, I didn't have ten thousand. It's not like you just sent it out to your team, and that's all they had. They had no. I was, yeah, I was. I was working out of Bilbao in Spain, and that was a uh, General Electric has thirty different businesses, and in our in our um, warehouse, you saw, you you can, you can say we had about one hundred fifty people, but I had ten thousand people around the world from all different businesses. From all different um, nationalities on there, so um, 
So, Man, and that was within 12 months. So that was just that just I just woke up and I thought, wow, there's a need here. So that's why I got into this. So John, you've done something that's pretty unique, I think. And it's just as an outsider looking at it, as a person who's you know, along with Oz is, is in this space as far as blogging and having a website and having a presence, a, a you know, a public presence. Jordan the same way, and you know, certainly what I'm trying to do with your Excel TV. And so I kind of see the landscape of that. And I see that what from my perspective, what you're doing is a little bit different from what other people have done. And here's what I mean by that. From my perspective, what most people do, what most people have done, what we're doing here at Excel TV and, and I think what Jordan Oz has done as well is um, uh, there's a little bit of, okay, I'm going to share a little bit with myself and then kind of see how it goes and kind of create a blog, write a few things, see how it goes. And if it goes well, then maybe a year down the road, maybe I'll write a book or I'll create a product or something. It kind of builds on itself. And from my perspective, from looking at what you've done, you've kind of uh, flipped that on its head. To where it seems like you're you're almost a product first guy. You came out with a product first, with a training, with something you can monetize and make a living out of, and then from there have moved into the blog and creating something around that. Could you talk a little bit through? First off, am I right? <laughs> and if I am, could you walk through that decision a little bit? And yeah, you you're that? right. You're right. First, I came out with a product because with a blog, you're not going to be making a lot of money straight away. It's going to take a couple of years to monetize that. Maybe never. So I thought I'd create a course um, because I really wanted to, I hated my boss. I hated bosses throughout my life. And I wanted to, I didn't want to work with someone else. I wanted to get out of there. You know, I did my apprenticeship. I've been working for about 15 years in the professional field. And I go, enough's enough. You know, I, I want my own, uh, you know, I want to wake up and have my own choices in life and my own creativity. And yeah, so I thought my way out of this is to create a course and sell it and teach other people. So the main thing is teach other people, and then if they're gonna buy it, they're gonna like it. Then you know I'll get I'll get monetized for it, I'll get paid for it, and then I can get away from that shitty paying job and bring out more courses and make people more um, you know knowledgeable within Excel. So. That's that, that's the way that I looked at it, and you know I wanted to leave in the first month that I sold my extreme pivot table course. You know I made about seven hundred dollars. The second month was about you know one and a half thousand, then two thousand, then two thousand every month. Jeez. And in Spain, you don't get paid well. I was give, I was getting paid two thousand dollars a month in Spain. It's about forty thousand gross, thirty six thousand. You know in Spain is is normal, but for me coming from Australia, when you're on a hundred thousand dollars a year. And you go on this, you know, small wage. Um, you're like, okay, man, this isn't good. You know, I've got a family. I, I wanted to make something out of my life, so I'm not going to make something out of my life staying here working with someone else. So I go, I'm going to take make this course, and if it goes well, then bang. And, and it did. And with six months of track record, I was making about two thousand, then three thousand, and then about four thousand. And then I thought, okay. I asked my wife, let me go, please. So in um, January 2015, this time last year, pretty much, I left General Electric and, and I went with this full time. And so then I dedicated you know, more time on marketing and selling. And I haven't looked back since. Wow. Right. Well, Congratulations. Great. I want to ask you, when you say if you're not doing e-learning, you got to jump in. So why aren't you keeping this as some kind of secret and you aren't concerned that I might show up in Eclipse and then you, you're a hobo somewhere. Uh, what do you mean? Copy the course and sell it somewhere else or no, 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 copy no, my no. course? Just getting into e-learning. Um, man, everyone's getting into e-learning now. I don't know if you know about it, but everyone's getting into e-learning now. Mm -hmm. It's easier to get into it now than it was five years ago, ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, you know why am I not concerned? Because I have an Australian accent, and you don't. So you know, I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's, it's it's people for for each country. As you, can, you know, you got Indian people selling in, in the Indian market, you got Spanish people selling in the Spanish market. So it's you have your own personality. I have my own personality, and people resonate with it, and they buy based on that. And once you have a following, then they'll buy your next course, and they'll buy your other course, and and it's like that. So you just got to set yourself apart, and you have a great personality, Oz. And man, I think whatever you bring out, you have a small following. People, you're gonna have them for life. And I think uh, I, I harken back to what I heard Chan do say. We asked him a 
I think maybe Jordan asked him a similar question in episode number four, season one. He said, uh, hey, what about these books? And I think Jan Du says something to the effect of, hey, Jordan, why are you writing this dashboarding book? Because we can right. say dashboarding books have been done to hell. Everybody's done it, but they'll they'll pay attention because it's your perspective. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, you had a question as well? Yeah. So um, before we uh, before the show, we were talking about um, our, our different projects because I told you it took me three long, horrible, hate-filled years to, fill, to finish uh, dashboards for Excel, and you said... Um, it took about 12 months to finish your um, video course. So can, can you tell our audience, uh, folks who are thinking about starting video courses like myself, um, uh, you know, what, is it, what does it take? You know, why, what things have you learned? Uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you just speak to it a little bit. Well, it took me 12 months because I was working full time at General Electric. So that's why I decided you know, I had to record it at, at night time. So that's why it took a long time. And it also took a long time because pivot tables is just, uh, it's rich full of features that I didn't know about when I started. I was a novice in pivot tables before this. And then once I got into it, like, man, there's so many things in there. And then, and I'm a perfectionist as well. I want to write about every single feature, all the 15 different show value as um, features. So, so once you're consumed in there, you're like, bang, you just get consumed in it, you want to get it all out, and and I did, and that's because it's pivot tables. Um, the same thing can happen with with um, with formulas. There's so many formulas there. But um, you can create a course in less than 12 months. You can create a course in three months. I've, I've seen people create a course in one month, and that's fine. You can create a mini course. It doesn't have to be an extensive course. I've taken my 10 hour course and I've condensed it into 3 hours and I've sold it as a 3 hour course. I've also condensed, condensed it as a 1 hour course and I've sold it as that. So you don't have to go into it, in, you know, do everything at once. You've got to get it out first. You can do a 1 hour course and then build on it and drip feed people with, with new videos. So, um, so this is from my tips. So let's say you're just going to sit down and do it. You know, what are some tips so you don't hit the hit the wall and say, "Oh, I'm done. This is too complicated." Um, if you lose the passion, if you lose the passion, then you're like, "Okay," and then you're going to give up. Then you're going to think about, "Okay, let let let's just let's let's pivot away from there." <laughs> <laughs> and um, let's um, let's do a shorter course, okay? So you got to still have the passion for it because uh, it, it will take long, you know. And the time will always pass. So you got to just, just you got to hang in there. You just got to hang in there, and you know, good things do take time. And it's like a good wine, like a Crianza we're talking about in the Yoka. You know, it takes um, four years in the barrel. So once it's out, man, people are loving it. So it's the same thing as that. Cool. Hopefully I answered the question. I don't know. I'm just... <laughs> no, I, I like the wine analogy. Yeah. Um, and so, sorry, one last question. You no, don't have to answer if you want to... Uh, but what technology to use, just for our listeners? Okay. Um, to record the um, videos, I use Camtasia, okay, and that's for Windows. Mm -hmm. Now, Screencast is for for um, Apple. I believe I'm not an Apple user. Excel geeks shouldn't use Apple. Um, so yeah, Do that right. and <laughs> yeah, I, I use Camtasia to record the screen. Now, what it does is it's, it's, uh, it costs 150 dollars. You can download it. You go to techsmith.com. You get a 30 day free trial, and what it does is it records the screen. And then you need a microphone. You can get a cheap microphone for twenty dollars. If you want to do a course, you know, pay a hundred dollars for a microphone because you're gonna get that money back when you sell the course. So you need a um, Camtasia and a microphone. Mm -hmm. Pretty much that's it. Hit the record button in Camtasia. You record the screen. You talk. You talk. And then after that, you edit it all out within Camtasia. And then you press a button, it uploads it as an MP4 file, and then you have your tutorial. And you've got to do that 200 times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, so you've done all the editing and everything. Yeah, and that's yeah. another thing, man. I'm a perfectionist as well. The editing takes ages. I think recording is easy because you can just talk. And I know you should have a script at the start. 
and then I'm like, nah, no, nah, no. Nah, nah. You're just gonna have bullet points and just talk. Mm-hmm. And talk. Yeah. You can you can edit everything out afterwards. Yeah. And so yeah, I recorded all the videos, um, the first edit, and then I went back and did all the editing, all the you know, cut out all, all the rubbish, and um, and then put an intro, put an outro, put the music in there, and uploaded it as an MP4 file and. At the end of the day, you've got all your videos, and then you just sort of um, upload it on a website. There's a great website called thinkific.com, which is a learning management system. And uh, what you do is they um, host your courses. They have the e-commerce on there. They have your landing page. They have everything on there, and it's cheap. It's like you know 50 bucks a month, and they have it. It's just you know that's where you need to use to sell your courses online. Um, you can also sell it to a, a third party, which you get a, a smaller commission like um, Udemy or Curious.com or Skillshare. There are so many now. You know, I get emails every week from people saying, "Oh, we have this great um, um, new website. You want to sell your course on there?" And I, and I put it on there, and I make no sales because these guys don't have any students, and you know, they think that they'll sell it by having a good course on it. No, you got to market the course. You got to have a lot of students on it. So yeah, so you can you should host it yourself. Um, not host it yourself. Host it using thinkific.com. They take a three percent share just from the credit cards, right. and you know fifty bucks a month is cheap. You can say I'll sell my course at ninety nine dollars at two hundred dollars for a downloadable version, and now I've got a, a lifetime access for three forty nine. So um, yeah, that's that's how it is, man. And you know, I can tell you now I'm making about from this course. I'm making about ten thousand a month in sales. Wow! So, so what what was that platform again? Thinkific.com. Think. And we, we can put on on the show notes. We will put on the show notes there. Yeah. And uh, there's other websites on there that I you know again I can let you know. Um, WooCommerce. That takes a bit more work on your end. But think of it, man, they do everything, you know. Mm. The uploading, the e-commerce system, the landing page. Um, so if you go to my website and you click on Excel courses, you'll see that you'll go to a page. That's the think of it page. And it'll be mikesellerline.thinkific.com and it's like my page, it's all green and all that. You go there, you, you click on it, you see the course, you, you preview the videos, and if you want to buy it, you buy it. So that's, um, that's how it's done. It's, it's easy. Software is, is so easily accessible and cheap right now. Cheaper than it was 10 years ago. And it's, it's so easy, it's intuitive, and man, it's anyone can get into it. Okay. Thank you for that, John. Um, first off, um, we're about to move on to the next segment of the show. Yeah, topic of the week this week is Excel podcast. So uh, as far as I know, there's only, gosh, a handful of Excel podcasts out there. And a, you know, a good portion of the people who watch the topic sections of the show, or watch the entire show, tend to be other Excel bloggers or Excel consultants who are looking to expand into training, looking to expand into you know, just about anything. Certainly podcasts is a portion of that. So I'd like to... to Tap into that a little bit, John, if I could, since you're one of the few people outside of Chan Do that I know of that has an active Excel podcast. Uh, so first off, we want to get to the technology here in a minute, but what made you decide to start an Excel podcast to begin with? Podcasts, podcasts are big right now. Ever since 2008, after all the crash, the recession, people didn't have any jobs and they, you know, they wanted to fund themselves. So they started podcasts, they started blogs, and it really took off from there. And now there's a stat that's fifteen percent of Americans have listened to a podcast in the last twelve months. Um, there are over two hundred and fifty thousand podcasts on iTunes. So there are mass, you know, two hundred fifty thousand podcasts. And how many Excel podcasts are there? Only one. And that's Chan Dues. And congratulate him because you know he got it up there. And I thought, man, Chan Du has one. Someone should have another one. So it's it's a great way um, to market your business. Mm-hmm. And um, it's also a great way to learn Excel from your guests and also from the, for the listeners. This is for the listeners because I can talk about Excel, but you know I don't know anything. I don't know everything about Excel. I know eighty percent. Okay, I'm no VBA expert. Maybe one day I will be. 
Um, and that's why I love Excel because I'm, you know, I don't know everything. If I knew everything, I'd fall out of love with it. So it's like a woman. If you get bored of her, you, you know, you go to the next one. So I always try to keep myself interested in that, in, in, in there. So and um, that's why, yeah, the podcast, he had a show, and I liked his, his Q&A format shows at the start where he interviewed him, Michael Alexander, and I liked that. And I thought, and then after he went more about talking about, you know, his own show and his stuff, and I thought, I like the Q&A. So I decided to, to um, interview fellow Excel MVPs and Excel experts because there are so many out there. Mm -hmm. And they know stuff that I don't know. They know VBA. They know Power Pivot. They know Power Query. So, yeah, so what I did is I, I decided to get in that. Wow. So, uh, how many, uh, how many questions? One, go, go ahead, Alice. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, you have these hour long episodes in a world that where the experts tell you three minutes. Three minutes is long. You need to cut this down. So how are you okay with an hour or so? And the next question is about, um, you know, doing Excel without showing Excel. Uh, I was thinking that too. I was going to yeah. that question. Um, people drive to work and they don't have Excel on the laptops and they've got to listen to something. And, and I, I don't go into detail of, okay, this is how to do a VLOOKUP, equals VLOOKUP. The first argument is this, the second argument is that, no. It's more about talking about the story of the Excel expert. Yes. They, people love stories and storytellers, so it's more about the background of how they became to be an Excel expert and an expert in their field. And also talking briefly, so it's, it's introducing the Excel feature briefly, you know, getting the, the, the lips wet and um, so, and then it's not going into greater detail. If they want to go into greater detail, there are show notes which I put on there and they can click on the tutorial there and then when they go get into work after listening in their car or in, in transit, they can go in there and click in the show notes and, and they'll see the tutorial that we talked about. And, um, yeah, so podcasts, you know, you don't need to have Excel to in front of you to right. learn it. Well, you can go to work and listen to it in the meantime via the show notes. You can see all the tutorials, and that works well. But then you have the problem that your boss is looking over your, over your neck. So, um, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. man, podcasts are, are huge, and, and a lot more people should get into it. I don't know why, why they're not getting into it. You know, VBA people should be starting podcast shows. Um, you know, Excel TV, you guys should just do an MP3 format and just put it as a podcast show. That's just another idea, so, yeah. You know, we originally started doing that. Um, I don't really know if it's still around, but they're what, they were sitting, they were floating around for a minute. Yeah, we, we had uh, decided okay. to do for, actually, this, this show started out as a question. I'll, I'll let Oz get to his, uh, his follow-up question real quick, and then I want to expand on that a little bit on, on Excel TV and podcast. Go ahead, Oz. Um, well, I want to thank you because my own videos have taken a different direction where um, maybe half of what I've done in the past few months doesn't show Excel. And I feel mm -hmm. inspired by you and Chandu for doing Excel without showing it. And it goes back to, you know, when I started playing bass and you don't always need to have the bass with you. You know, that's the actual music, the actual playing. But then it helps to hear, say, Bootsy Collins talk about his relationship with James Brown and the things that James Brown would let him get away with or would make him stop doing, um, his relationship with the drummers when he came in, and all of that stuff that influences how the music comes out, right? Because you, you're there doing, but then there's the context about what will be put up with and what won't be and what's expected and how the directions that we're needing to change and how, um, you know, in a lot of the workshops I've done, I've found people don't need more formulas. They need to lay their stuff out right or they need to see that they don't have good processes. And as that helps when you get away from the instrument and have a conversation about the context within 
the music or the data is happening in. Yes, yeah, spot on. You gotta you gotta know what's possible rather than what's available. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. And and um, what's not working and what's working. Kind of jump back a little bit to some of the previous question then around uh, kind of Excel TV. Gosh, we had considered that. Uh, actually, whenever we first started Excel TV, the, the first idea that was floated is that we would be a podcast. And this is before Chan Du had come out. We didn't think we'd be a video show. So it's like uh, uh, Jordan went between jobs. He said they're starting up this consulting firm. He said, hey, we should do a podcast. I said, well, yeah. I thought we'd do a <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, that, uh, you, can, you can actually, that's, that's cool, but you can actually yeah. pull this video on the um, on the Apple video um, podcast. That's what we've had. We've yeah. done that so about about a year and a half ago or so. We've got about six episodes or so in. Uh, we took an MP3 version of it and actually connected it up to the store and uh, had a podcast, or at least one of the podcasts. And that was kind of the thought, okay, we'll just turn these into MP3s all the way up to maybe the tip section. So all of this is kind of content, you know, it's discussion, all of this. Why not just turn this into an MP4, create a, you know, a, a process that does that, and then pop this out as podcast. So that was actually part of our, our process for a little bit, but... Uh, we just kind of got away from that and haven't gotten back to it yet. Certainly, that's still in our mind, which is why I'm asking such pointed questions. Because <laughs> as I as I listen to what you've done, and, and I've listened to a few, and, and I listened to Oz's most definitely, uh, Oz's yes, you know, I was uh, I was taken back by the polish that you had to your podcast, from from the intros to the commercials to everything else. It just seemed very well put together. Uh, could you talk a little bit about? the technology and the processes you have in place to make all of that happen. Sure, yeah. I had no idea before getting into this podcast um, scene. I listened to a lot of podcasts. And what I did, as you do, is you buy a course, an online course. And there's a great one out there called Podcast Paradise by John Lee Dumas, Entrepreneur on Fire. And he has a course on making podcasts. And that's what I did. I paid that expensive, a thousand dollars. But anyway, um, yeah. So that's it's a lifetime access. And what it does, it, it allows you, tells you what you need to do a podcast. Because I had no idea about all these equipment that I have here. I have a, a mixer. You know, you got the microphone. You can see here a professional microphone that's over there. Maybe if I put that mm -hmm. other way down there. Yeah. You know, I had to buy all that stuff. And okay. And he had, the course had it all laid out. So you had the section of equipment. This is what you need if you want to um, do the cheap way or the free way. Um, I didn't want to go down that route. I wanted to spend a bit of money because I know in the long run it's going to you know, be worth it. So, yes, yeah, so I went, you know, the expensive, right now expensive route. Microphone, $500, mixer, $500. So I've got the equipment. So you need that. And then you need a, a software to record the um, the audio, the interview. And I use Adobe Audition, and that's like thirty dollars a month. You can get a freebie. I think it's called GarageBand. Um, so yeah, and what I do is I do a Skype call. It's uh, it's not a video Skype call. It, it's a uh, it's an audio Skype call with my interviewee, and then that gets recorded via Adobe. It records my voice and and his or her voice. And that gets recorded, and then you know, and once I record that, I do a lot of editing. The editing is the hardest bit. It takes me about like six hours, maybe one day or two days to do a lot of editing. And uh, yeah, once you get all the editing right, you put the intro, the outro. You just got to upload it into a hosting server. I use the Libsyn, and you know that hosts your. Um, the podcast, so when people download it, it's got to come from somewhere, it comes from Libsyn. So you got all that in there, and then you got to put in a, a WordPress site or on your current website where you can put in the Libsyn audio player and people can listen to your podcast. And once you put it on, on Apple, people have an Apple iPhone, they can automatically um, listen to your podcast. They can subscribe to it and each time you bring a new podcast show, you get that alert. So, you know, everyone has a phone now, so you can listen to a podcast on your phone. And um, so that, that's the, the kind of equipment that you need. You also need, you know, uh, a QA and a or what format you want to do, a Q&A format, or you have a, a, a host like you guys, or it's just yourself talking. So you got to think about that before you start. 
And I thought about the Q&A form and I had my avatar, who's going to be my avatar, my listener. Her name is Dawn, she's a uh, professional, 40 years old, working in, in a shitty firm for so many years and uh, <laughs> she uses Excel but doesn't really know how to use it to its full potential. So you've got to know your, your, your listener. Um, so yeah, and then create the questions. That was a bit hard, creating the questions. And so yeah, you just got to have a format of the show. If you don't have a format of the show, then it's not going to go down well. You can have a format of the show, follow it, and yeah, pretty much it. The intro, someone can get it done for two hundred dollars, and the outro, you just say what you want. They put the music, you know. On in this course, it has everything of huge use to make the intros, the outros, and it took me three months, two to three months, to get my head around it, to learn everything, and and also press the record button because it takes some courage as well, nerves. And it took me, like the first time I did with, with Chris Macro, I go, man, let's just do it. If we make mistakes, I can edit it out. And then once you get into it, it's fun. It's like this. You're like, wow, you're just talking and you can edit it all out later. So, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, you know what's funny is that when we started Excel TV, because there really, I had this anxiety and I wasn't sure whether to do it. And Rick was like, spaghetti against the wall, we are going to do it. Yes. Um, and then we did, and um, yeah, we don't we don't really look back. Uh, I know Rick saw a few of the he recently rewatched the first few of the episodes. I've not said so they're kind of hard to watch. That's why I've not. Um, but you know, that's really. I was going to ask you some questions, but you really went through everything. That really was a podcast one hundred and one um, freebie review. Yeah. Well, so and it's funny because we're probably the first the ones doing this on Hangout. So. Clearly, we should be rolling in the G's, right? Right, everyone. But yeah. Um, so I want. I did want to um, ask you. So, have you gotten any feedback on your podcast? Um, you know, what what are things people have liked about it? What are things that you've liked? Um. Yeah, I've got a lot of reviews, but I did a promotion. Uh, one other thing is is to promote your your podcast, and I got all these other affiliates to you know promote my podcast to get reviews so you can get ranked. The feedback, um, some people said, oh, you know, you can't see yourself, so you're not going to learn. So I go, okay, well, that's not the path that I'm going, so I'm going to ignore you. Another person said, oh, you know, it's too long. It's an hour long. I only need 15 minutes. I understand that, but pause it, you know, do your workout, and then next day, tomorrow, listen to the other 15 minutes. You're not going to make everyone happy. So you've got to know or not. what you want to do and stick with that and stick with that. And yeah. currently I'm getting, what is it? Uh, I'm getting 4,000 downloads a month. Oh, I've wow. been going for six months, and that's okay. You know, I want to get to ten thousand, I want to get to more, but I'm just starting out. And you're going to be there for about twelve months. You're going to have a few shows to get traction. And man, I, I just want to introduce Excel to more people, Excel MVPs and experts to more people, and just get the word out. That's that's the thing, man. If people don't listen to it, well, they don't listen to it. You know, I'm having fun creating it, and um, yeah, so awesome. Awesome. So thank you so much for that, John. If there's no more questions from anyone else, we're going to go ahead and move over to the tips section. All right. So what I have here is that I have something that says wrong date format, and you can see here uh, you've probably seen something like this before. If you've ever extracted from any database system, you see these dates are in serial format. We don't really like them in serial format because serial format is tacky. So how can I fix this? Well, there's a few different ways to do this, how we can convert um, text to numbers and text to dates. I'm going to show you one of the most recent ways that I've learned that I really like because I know there's a copy and paste method. This is the one that I uh, learned today. I probably knew it already at some point. Um, but what you're going to do here is you're going to select the range that you want to convert. So in this case, we have A2 through A21. I'm going to go over to the data tab. Um, you can see that up here. I'll move my mouse over where it says text to columns. I'm going to select that. Now, you've probably used text to columns before. Um, if not, what you can do is if you have text that's all in one column, you are able to split it off into multiple columns. We're actually not going to do any of that right now. We don't even care about that. Um, all we're going to do is we're going to click Finish. And you see that it's now moved over to the right. Well, when this sort of number moves over to the right, that means Excel is recognizing it no longer as a number or no longer as text, but now as a number. And if I go here, I can just change it to a short date. And there we go. We've just uh, converted 
uh, text that is meant to be a date. Um, and I believe this will also work in numeric form uh, to uh, what the type it should be. So just as a reminder, let's just walk through that one more time. I'm going to hit Control Z just to undo. We have it in the wrong format. We go to the data tab, go to text to column, just click finish. You don't have to do anything else. There you are. It's already uh, converted. And then we'll wow. go click date again, short date. That is a wow. great tip. You know how quick that is? There are some other tips I've seen where you select everything and you multiply or divide by one. This is a quick, quick tip, and I love quick tips. Wow. Wow. That's, that's love nice. it. That's nice. Thank you. Thank you. I just I, I learned this. I just recently yeah. learned this. I should have known it beforehand, but it's like you say, John. That's so you, right. you never be never be perfect in it. You're always learning. Exactly. That's why you're in love with Excel. Yep. Also, I think I think you had a tip as well. So here we have um, <clears throat> we've got this this data. Okay, we've got dates, we've got names of, say, customers, and then locations and how many coffees they bought. All right, so a lot of times we want to summarize this. We might want to know by month, by location, and just a summary. Okay, so let's go into the get and transform, because one way we could do this would be to use um, some ifs, count ifs, but we're not going to do that. Okay, so we're going to go to, um, so the data is in a table, so we're going to say from table. All right, so now the data is here, so let's um, transform this. We want to make this. Oh, let's see. Oh, right here. Date. Okay. So now I want to add a column. And I want it to be the month. Okay, so now I have my month. And I want to move it over. And the steps are being recorded over here. All right, so now I want to Group by month, okay, and I want to group by location, and I want a total here, so I'm going to have a sum of what column? Of the coffees column. Boom. Cool. So now I've got Maine, Downtown East, Downtown East, Maine. But what I want to do now is I want to say, um, let's put this as ascending and then make this one ascending as well. Okay, so now it's Downtown East, Main Street, Downtown East, Main Street. So it's all consistent. So I go ahead and close and load this. Beautiful. Now, I've got this data over here that needs to be put in. This is the West Town data. And now because it's in a table, boom. Now, refresh. There's our West Town. Cool. Ah! Boom. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's it. Touchdown! Oh, I like that. That was a great tip and a shocking yell. Oh, man. <laughs> now I gotta. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's man. Your first prime time episode. <laughs> well, shoot, man. Getting transformed. Good God Almighty! That that's all you can say. Well, next up, the Excel news of the week. Okay, so first up, I want to remind everyone, the Excel Summit South 2016 out there in Auckland, Sydney, and Melbourne is coming up March 3rd, various dates, March 3rd through March 11th. So go and check this out. A lot of the experts, gosh, even just people who have been on this show, Zach Parisi's been on the show. Uh, we like Inga Bort. We see her quite a bit. 
Um, Bill Jello, of course, Mr. Excel has been on the show. Ken Pulse has been on the show. John Peltier. We like Mr. Charles Fast Excel William. But man, go ahead and check this out if you're over there in the Australia part of the world. Go check out the Australia New Zealand Excel Summit South 2016 in March. Next up, a little bit of news about Power BI and Excel. Guys, Gartner has come out with their rankings of around uh, BI. Uh, business intelligence, and this is largely due on the strength of Power BI, which is a derivative of you know Power Pivot, Power Query, Power all that sort of stuff. Kind of rolled up into a new tool, a new desktop tool. Wow! For everything that I hear about Tableau and Click View, and gosh, even uh, SAP and some of the other power players that you would generally expect to see, look where Microsoft is at now. This is out of nowhere, guys. They are the leaders as far as completeness of vision. And there's only two that are barely edging them out of the ability to execute. And if you remember from our last episode, where we had Ginger Grant on the show, and she was talking about Power BI and just the amount of resources that it seemed that Microsoft was putting into Power BI and into making it uh, you know, kind of a leader of the industry. Gosh, if you're a BI guy or gal, you need to pay attention to this and, and think about the fact that this is almost free and that Tableau. Uh, some industry leaders have said could be going the way of Netscape. Mm, that's right. I, I would not be surprised. Microsoft rolls out something uh, practically for free. <laughs> and yeah. It's already on the desktop, and Tableau becomes Netscape. So go check that out. If you haven't looked out Power BI yet, go check that out. New Gardner rankings out there, and a lot of people who spend money in IT pay attention to that stuff. Next up contacted by one of my friends over there that runs ExcelChamps.com. Yeah. Uh, if you have not visited ExcelChamps.com, these guys come out with a blog post or some sort of free content and information practically every single day. I mean, John Lutus puts out four posts a week. I think these guys are probably putting out four posts a week. Ah, uh, going to be. <laughs> uh, <laughs> four posts a day. <laughs> four posts a day. I mean, they're, they got a machine. So, so anyway, so go check out Excel Champs. A lot of tricks and tips and everything else. So it, just about anything you'd like to know about Excel, go check them out. They're some of the new kids on the block. Next up, we'd like to bring your attention to our YouTube page. We are up to 2,913 subscribers. So what that means is by that we're, you know, we're adding 100 or so subscribers pretty much a month. Um, so it means by this time next month, by our next episode, we should be over 3,000. So what that means is if you're at a library, just go over to the computers and just subscribe. Subscribe to anybody who might be logged in. If you're you know, logged in, go over to where your coworkers are logged into their computer and just go over to YouTube when they're at lunch and subscribe to Excel TV on their yes. account. Yes. You know, do a friend a favor there. We have over 3,000. So thank you very much for your support on that. Yep. Um, next up, I want to show you some new things on Excel TV. Uh, first up, John Michalutis. This is the home page here. But if you come over to Excel TV, there's something new to show you here. So we're trying to make this easier to get around. So and easier to get around, what I mean is whenever you land on something, you don't have to go through five pages of categories and stuff like that to figure out where the posts are. Now you can just go over to Season 1. And when you click on Season 1, wow, all the episodes from Season 1 are in one place. So all the gurus from Ken Pulse that we just talked mm. about, Gosh, uh, Zach Barisi, who we just talked about, John Peltier, who we just talked about, is me and uh, you know, in, in the Excel Summit South, and we talked about Bill Jellin, who's who's guys, and there he is. We talked about Chan Do a lot earlier in the show, and there he is. So pretty much everybody's kind of all in one place, so it's very easy to get around to the stuff. And if you click on here, which you'll notice now, which is a little bit new for this, as you scroll down, you'll see, wow, over on the right hand side are all the other episodes that are in that season. So it's very easy to kind of get around now, so just go check that out. Next up, I wanted to bring your attention to this episode. So if you didn't go to full episodes, you go to season three, you're going to eventually come to episode 41. That's this episode. And you click here and watch the show that's in progress right now. But what I'd like to do is show you down here in the comments section. Come down here and leave a comment for John. If you had a question about pivot tables, if you had a question about any of the online courses that he has, if you have a question about, gosh, podcasts or anything later this episode, if you just want to get in contact with John, this is a great place uh, to, to get in contact with him. 
And but there's there's something else around John's stuff. If you come up here, see we uh we like John, so we have his logo here. And that'll take you to something very similar to this around his pivot tables course. And John, you have something coming up right now around pivot tables. Would you mind talking about this? Yes, I have a free one hour pivot table webinar where anyone can join up. Um, it's three times a day from Monday to Friday and you can select your date, select your time, put in your email address and then um, you can watch the webinar during that time. It's an hour webinar from you know how to uh, structure your data, how to insert a pivot table, then how to um, analyze your data, then you know, how to do a, um, a variance um, from the previous month, how to do a year to date, and how to group dates. You can also, you know, I'll teach you how to insert a, a slicer and how to create dashboards mm. with pivot chart. Now that is the best thing. And I've got some cool tips right at the end. And also um, giving all Excel TV listeners subscribers and fans, 25% off if they decide to purchase the Extreme Pivot Table course. Um, now this, this webinar is free, so you can watch it for an hour for free and then, you know, don't do anything. But if you do want to purchase the Extreme Pivot Table course, which is over 200 pivot tables and 12 months online access, you can also download the videos and keep them forever. 25% off if you put Excel TV in the coupon area of the checkout page of myexcelonline.com. So for all you guys there, if you want to learn Excel and pivot tables mainly, man, it's got everything there. This is the most comprehensive pivot table course in the whole world. Um, you know, I'm confident in saying that. There's over 15,000 students and uh, you can have a look at the, all the ratings and reviews on my website and even this free webinar, you don't need to get the whole course. This webinar you're going to learn a lot, you're going to make some pivot tables, some great an analysis, some great dashboards that you can show to your boss and say, hey, look at this. And you know, I'm sure that you're going to get recognized if you not get a promotion. Mm. So John, um, so, so some people spell Excel TV, Excel TV. So, so they might, might be watching this right now. Let's take a look at it. Is that the coupon code E-X-C-E-L-T-V? That's right. Awesome. Perfect. So thank you very much for that, John. And I believe, uh, Jordan, you also had some news. I do. That's some awesome news. Let's jump right to it. I am right now at the uh, University of Cincinnati Center for Business Analytics website. Uh, you can um, go ahead and uh, you, you can go to that. Um, you can either do business.uc.edu. I actually will just tell you. It's probably easier to Google it, University of Cincinnati. Um, and you'll see the Center for Business Analytics. Um, what I want to point your attention to, and the link of, for this, of course, is also on my website at optionexplicitvba.com, um, is this Analytics in Excel course. This is from Thursday, March 10th through the 11th from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Why am I bringing this up? Because yours truly will be leading the session. That's in Cincinnati, Ohio, and it's part of the University of Cincinnati's um, Analytics in Excel short course. Now. Uh, that's a two-day course. There's going to be lunch. It's uh, I've done this. Uh, this will be my third time. So we've had a great cohort the last two times. We became good friends with many of um, the folks that uh, showed up. So I really enjoy it. You're going to learn a lot of the stuff I talk about in Dashboards for Excel. And we're going to do a lot of not just dashboards but analytics, so data summaries and my favorite, data visualization. We're going to do it all quickly, effectively. So we're going to follow data visualization principles and we're going to do it without any VBA. So I know a lot of people are really excited about that, but it's all part of just giving you something that you can walk away with and use right away as analysts and folks familiar with Excel. So check that out, Introduction to Analytics in Excel. If you are, you should check if your company is part of the University of Cincinnati Business Analytics Center network because you will get a discount on the course. But if you ever want to meet me, and we'll also have some giveaways for my book at the course, this is a great, um, this is a great workshop, so please attend. Uh, and hope to see you there. Well, thank you for that, Jordan. Well, gosh, this brings us close to close to the end of the show, John. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. You know, I've been watching you from the periphery for a while now, watching the kind of growth of your business over the last two years, and have been impressed with just the the quality of the podcast, the quality of the site, the quality of your, your the difference in your business approach, which we hit on a little bit earlier, which was kind of a product first versus versus blog first. So. 
it's a real pleasure finally having you on the show and finally giving the chance to talk with you. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, it's been great being on the show. Thank you very much. Uh, you know you've made it in Excel when you're on Excel TV. <laughs> and Skippy. Now, before I, go, before I go, just a quote which I love and I use every day when I was recording my pivot table course, those long nights, and I was like, oh, man, it's never going to end. And this goes, maybe you may resonate with this um, as well, Jordan. This is by Earl Nightingale. Never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it. The time will pass anyway. There you Mind go. You I like it. That's, Love it. That's for you, Jordan. That's for, stuff. for everyone. <laughs> so everyone. So, so thank you so much for being on the show. And gosh, we'll see you, gosh, in March. So we're going on a monthly format now. So. We'll see you in March with the next episode of Excel TV, which will be episode 43. So until next time, this is Rick Rantham, along with Oz Du Soleil and Jordan Goldmeyer, reminding you to keep on excelling. We'll see you next time.